On our previous video, we looked at the separability. We're looking at the Hamiltonian operator in a particular Schrodinger's equation, where we looked at this here, where our wave function is with respect to x and y. Now, in here, we're having something quite complicated in terms of now adding two variables which are the x and y's and we need to be able to separate them by treating them independently of each other so as a result of that what we have is the Hamiltonian operator to be with respect to x and resulting in our energy on the x-axis or coordinates and this also is applied to the Hamiltonian operator on the y generating our energy on the y so in this case we actually looked at a specific example which was actually hydrogen chloride which is a diatomic molecule and in this case we're able to look at two variables and separate them which are the vibrational motions and the translational motion now looking at the vibrational motion we looked at specifically the potential energies and the kinetic energies that are actually considered in diatomic molecules and this was actually important for we to pause a little bit and now dive into how we can go from the one dimensional harmonic oscillator to the two dimensional harmonic oscillator judging from looking at I'll say a specific variable in the vibrational motion which is the potential energy on the x axis where we have half multiplied by the first constant multiplied by our x squared now going into a two dimension we're going to have oh we're adding our y coordinates and this results in the sum of the squares and what we have is this right there now this actually leads us to okay how can we be able to go from one dimension to two dimensions and this leads to two proofs the first proofs is that is a Hamiltonian operator which is this separatable yes it is separatable when we're going from one dimension to two dimension harmonic oscillator because take note in here we're looking at both the sum of I would say the kinetic energy and that of the potential energy so in this case what we need to arrive at is that bringing in the kinetic energy and the potential energy we need to also be able to consider the x of both and the y coordinate for both of them so as a result what we result in is the generation of a Hamiltonian operator to be equal to the y coordinates or I'll say starting with the x coordinates sorry for the kinetic energy and that of the y plus the potential energy on the x plus the potential energy on the y so the kinetic energy operator is actually expressed as this uh, 2m multiplied by the second derivative with respect to x and now we're going to put our x's together because we're trying to treat our x's independent of our y and this is actually for the potential energy on the x axis sorry kinetic uh, but yes, potential energy on the x axis and this will be added with our other side which is Planck constant R squared divided by 2m multiplied by the second derivative of the y for the kinetic energy and that for the potential energy for the y is expressed as this so in this case we're able to actually separate the x axis from the y axis and treating them for both the kinetic energies and the potential energy in here but that way we can evaluate this 
in terms of the coordinates so looking ahead of this to the next part which is the second I would say proof is to be able to understand now that our Hamiltonian operator is separable now we need to be able to solve our show dangerous equation for the two-dimensional harmonic oscillator given the one-dimension harmonic oscillator so the one-dimension harmonic oscillator actually considers our energy to be equal to the Planck constant multiplied by K divided by the reduced mass or the mass or square root multiplied by the end level plus a half and this is actually also considering the I would say wave function of the ground state where alpha is divided by pi or a quarter and multiplied by negative alpha x squared over 2 and this is also considering the n equals 1 wave function which is 4 alpha cube divided by pi or 1 quarters multiplied by e negative alpha x squared divided by 2 so in here we're seeing our ground states to be expressed as this for the wave function and our n equals 1 to have its wave function expressed as this so in this case we need to also consider now that since we have this for our one dimension how about we explore this in the two dimensional aspect for our harmonic oscillator so for our harmonic oscillator in two dimension we need to take into consideration the wave function total which is actually depending on x and y but in this case we're going to separate them because we are trying to obey the theorem of separability which is treating each variables independently from each other and in here we're going to multiply both the x and y's and we need to take note that for the Hamiltonian operator we need to be able to separate the x's from the y and in this case this is going to be able to generate a two-dimensional separability theorem that we talked about on our previous video now since we'll note this then we need to be able to expand on this by looking at first if we know our Hamiltonian operator to be depending on the kinetic energy and the potential energy and the kinetic energy operator is actually evaluate or expressed as the Planck constant squared divided by the reduced mass times 2 multiplied by the second derivative on the x coordinate just looking at one dimensions and this is added with the potential energy on just the x for 1d how can we build on this to actually generate our second dimension for our harmonic oscillator so in this case what we can actually state is that in the two-dimensional harmonic oscillator we actually understand that we need to not only consider the x but also the y's for each of the kinetic and the potential energies so therefore by grouping the axes for the y's then we can actually form our harmonic oscillator like what we have right here so that is how we are able to go in terms of the harmonic oscillator total which is what we have right here and building on this we can actually evaluate our energy total which is what we have right here so for energy total we'll also be able to build on the 
one dimension of the harmonic oscillator and in by so doing we can actually generate a two dimensional aspect by just expressing the n in terms of the x coordinate and also the y coordinate and also by doing this we can also be able to look at our wave function of the n to be with respect to let's say the ground state to be equivalent to the x and that of the wave function of n equals 1 to be equal to the y so therefore in terms of the energy we actually determine the solution to be Planck constant multiplied by k divided by m which is reduced mass also the power of one half multiplied by n x plus half and this is going to be added with the n with respect to y and this is shown as that so in this case what we recognize is that we're going from the e n x to n y and in this case in terms of the degeneracy we have n to be 0 1 2 and that for the y to be 0 1 2 and so on while on this other side looking at the wave function where if you apply the Hamiltonian operator on will actually spit out the energy total we look at the wave function to be in terms of I would say going from either 1 to 0 or we can say from 0 to 1 to be equal to alpha divided by pi to one quarter and this is four alpha cube with one quarter and take note that all these are constants right here and this one here is representing here is representing our uh, n equals zero and this one right here is representing n equals one and on the other side we see that our exponent is actually taken into consideration where over 2 and on this other side is multiplied by y where in this case we take note that this is actually representing n equals 0 and uh, y all this here is representing n equals 1 and this is actually coming from this particular formula that we actually generated right here so in this case if you're looking at the energy total going from i would say one to zero or i would say zero to one what that results in is the plan constant multiplied by k divided by the reduced mass and a half is actually multiplied by half plus 3 over 2 where in this case 3 over 2 here is actually coming from n y equals 1 plus half which gives us 3 over 2 right here and this half right here is actually gotten from n x which is equal to zero and zero plus a half gives us a half which is what we got right there so that is about it for this particular video please hit the comment down below let me hear your thought about this by that way i can talk to you all later stay smart and believe in yourself